Welcome to another episode of Heavy Muscle Radio. I'm Dave Palumbo and I'm joined as always by the technician Chris Aceto on this October 28th, 2019 evening. And Chris, it is actually, it just turned Monday. We usually do this on Sunday, but it's actually Monday now. So well, we, we, do it. we do it when, when, when your kids are in bed and I'm almost asleep. Yeah. Midnight. Almost Halloween. Yeah, yeah five more days. This is, is the first Halloween days? I'm yeah. looking forward to with my kids because they, they actually understand it. Hol- my son really didn't understand it. He understands it impeccably now because he's in school. So he's all excited. Well, they understand that it's free candy. Yes. It is, uh, he didn't even understand what candy was before this year. My daughter knows everything because, you know, she's being trained by my son. But um, he's going to wear his costume to school. You know, on Halloween, he's got a Superman costume, and he, he, he wants to be a monster. Right? Now he wants to be a monster. I said, "You put the we got the Superman costume. You look like yeah, uh, you know, everyone's gonna love you in Superman." He said, "I want to be a monster. You want to be the Hulk? No, I just want to be a monster." He said, "Are you gonna get a lot of kids come to your house?" I don't know. We've never had before. I try to hide like on Halloween normally, but. You know, I lived my houses. The houses are really separated apart, so yeah. I don't know. I guess we should. Well, you could scare the crap out of them with the snakes and stuff. Yeah, come to the door with like boa constrictors. I think that's why they stay away from my house. To be honest with you, I think that the parents are like stay away from that house. They got snakes. They, like, people people think because you have snakes that they're like wandering around the house like a dog or a cat or something like that. You know, <laughs> it's not. They, they they think like it's like they're they're wild. That I have like twenty foot pythons just uh, slithering around my house. Well, I was scared the first time I ever stayed at your house in Seaford. Oh, you said right. The snake was right next to you. I first scared time. the crap out of me. I didn't realize I like lie down in the bed and I was like getting comfortable. I looked to the left, looked to the right, and I saw a snake. Here's I almost I, I put my. He was. He had a top on. I said I screamed, and then you said, <laughs> "Oh, Chris, don't worry about it." And he had a some type of top. To the tank, and I put my suitcase on top of the tank, <laughs> so that he couldn't push the top off and strangle me. That that was my that's my first one ever. Well, not ever, but that was my first one that started the whole craze. Blecky, and I still have I still have her. Dave, you're, you're not. I, here's a Dave story. When Cedric won, I think it was the New York Pro. That or maybe. And not this the next year in the New York Pro, I came to stay at your house and That's I was right. like beat tired. And it was like midnight and we're headed to your house and you said, Oh, I gotta make a quick pit, pit stop. And I was thinking, oh, he's gotta get something that like milk at seven eleven or juice or and you had to go out to JFK to pick up what, like a fish. Oh right. I forgot about that. It oh, was like one God. in the morning. I'm like, we're going we to We were the driving back, yeah, we were driving back, yeah. And you you had to go there to pick up something. Uh, Turtle or a fish? Not or picked a... up a fish, I think. Yeah, I picked up an arowana. Did I bring it to my office too at that time? I don't remember. I don't know. I fell asleep the minute we. we yeah, you were. Yeah, you were. You slept in the car, which was probably better. You probably got more sleep than you normally get. <laughs> I just couldn't right? say. Probably slept great. Yeah. You probably had better quality sleep, and then you had your, your whole life in that car. In the back seat, you probably were sprawled out. Yeah, I had to stop. I got the fish, and then I had to go to my office because that's where my big tank was, and I had to put them in there, and then I had to head home. It was it was a very stressful weekend for me because I was supposed to get the the I was supposed to pick it up. The snakes came or the snakes the um the fish came in late. They were supposed to be in the day before, and they and I couldn't leave them at the airport because they were like a thousand dollar fish. To, like there was two of them. They were like five hundred bucks each or something like that. These albino silver arowana. That's what they were. The albino something. And you're right. They were 500 bucks. Yeah. I said, Chris, I can't, I can't leave them. I'm going to die. I can't do this. So I got them. And, and the funny thing was these one fish wound up killing the other fish at, at some point. But the one fish grew to three feet long. It was a little like two, three inch fish I bought. It grew to three foot long, which is the, you know, they these things were eating like, uh, you know, 
six like, meals a day. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 huge meals. You could put 100 goldfish in, this guy would eat 100 goldfish. And so when I moved, I sold all my fish in my fish tanks. And that fish, believe it or not, I sold it for $3,000. And wow. the guy, it was an Asian guy, he drove up from Maryland, I think it was. With a, he built some kind of a tank into his the back seat of his car. It was the craziest thing I'd ever seen. And he's like, I'm like, look, this first of all, it was in a 600 gallon tank. It was a huge tank. It was 10 feet long. You can climb into the tank. I said, I told the guy, I said, look, I want the money first. I said, you can have the fish, but you're you're scooping the thing out because these these fish jump. And I knew. I said, and I didn't want any part. I didn't want, first of all, I didn't want to get soaked in water because the thing was going to make a, you know, a, it was going to be like a flood. And this Asian guy literally got into my fish tank, Chris, <laughs> with this fucking giant net. He probably was doing it back in Vietnam or something like that when he was a kid. And he scooped this thing out in like three seconds. And he got it in his car. I don't know how he did it. And where, was, do you play, where do you place an ad on Craigslist for a fish? What I did was, um, yeah, I had, my, I had it on Craigslist, and where else did I, I? I did a couple of videos on my YouTube channel, on my fish channel, saying I was selling them too, because I think it real fish people that would it, it would take a super crazy you know person to buy the thing, something like myself, you know, who's obsessed with yeah. what they're doing. So yeah, I was there. I had it on there, and I had it on uh, Facebook. Yeah, I put it all over the place. But I think Craigslist is yeah really where the person saw it. There was another guy. There was this really, like, really weird old guy who had this, someone driving around. He was like an old Greek guy. And he had a hotel, like, right near JFK Airport, right off, like, you can see it right off the Long Island Expressway. It was like, a, it's a really well-known hotel, like, really, but really, like, old, bizarre couches and, like, liber, almost Liberace-ish, if you think. And everyone knows the hotel. He owned the hotel, this guy. And he had a driver. He must have come f four times to my office and bought four fish at four different times. And he was always negotiating with me. He had a big fish tank, I guess, in the lobby of this hotel. And he kept adding. He was he was a really, you would love this guy. He was like a real, like, you know, old timer, like, you know, new, like one of those guys who knew Sinatra, that type of. Yeah. Um, yeah, Sinatra stayed at my place, you know. We used to hook him up with the, ch the girls, you know, stuff like that. Kind of <laughs> Yeah, I met some crazy people through with them selling all those fish. Another guy, the guy who bought the tank for me actually was from. He was he worked at the uh, he owned the. Uh, in Yankee Stadium, they have like a like a shop where they sell the merchandise. The Yankee yeah. Stadium merchandise. He owned that store. Oh wow! In Yankee Stadium, so you know he had wow. a, you know he and had he a big money. He, he bought a fish. He he didn't want he didn't know he bought the tank for me it was sick it was a ten foot tank it was three feet what was he gonna do with that put it in the store he or? had a fly river turtle that was like an endangered species who knows how the hell he got it I, he said he had paperwork for it but I don't know it was some kind of fly river turtle that was like endangered or something like that and he he needed a big tank for it and he said he, he the guy he negotiated he got it for a he, I got the tank for a steal from a guy who couldn't pay his bills a friend of mine. I didn't really want to buy it from originally, but I actually bought it. But he got it for me for the same price, which was also a steal. It was like two grand or something like that. But he got all the okay, equipment. I gave him every piece, piece of equipment I had, like every filter, and just because I wanted to get rid of everything, you know, because I was moving. And yeah, he was he was a cool guy. He, he was like, yeah, I come to Yankee State. I said, I wish I could. I said, now I find a connection to Yankee Stadium. I'm moving to Florida. I said. So, yeah, I met some 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 really interesting people through that. But so you know, we, Chris and I have been talking before the show about how we're becoming like our fathers, like the older we get. Yeah, I, I have every single mannerism that I always disliked from my father. It's it's like I swallowed a pill, and I have no control of it. The yeah. way I write, the way I put on my glasses, the way Absolutely. I slurp my coffee, the way I eat my food, the way I put on my pants, the way I get out of a chair, into a chair, complain about the chair. <laughs> Complain about people. Uh, that's funny. Someone sent me this thing about all these little old, old getting old sayings and like little they're jokes more so than anything. I'll read you a couple. Old age is coming at a really bad time. <laughs> 
this is this is the this is my this is the saying. This is my quote of the week. Here it is. The biggest lie I tell myself is that I don't need to write that down. I'll remember it. <laughs> <laughs> ha, ha, ha. My office is full of notes. Do you have notes everywhere? Movies. Did you yeah, ever see yeah. that movie Memento? No. Memento is a movie about a guy who couldn't remember anything past ten minutes. So he could only remember things ten minutes. So he had notes and tattoos on any but if ten minutes passed, he would not remember it, it would just disappear from his existence. And the movie's disjointed, so you don't the scenes are, are not in order. So you have to try to figure out what the fuck's going on. He just because he it's like all of a sudden his they put you into a into a situation with him. And you don't and he doesn't know what the fuck is going on because he doesn't remember anything past ten minutes. Mm. So you're like what who are these people who are coming? You don't know who anyone is. You got to figure it out. It's a great movie, actually. Uh, if you want to, like, really sit down and, and, and it's a thinking movie, you know. And the, and you say to yourself, "What if I could remember everything past ten minutes? How crazy would that drive you?" I was going to say, I don't have time to think. Let alone a thinking movie. <laughs> I'll write it down. Though. I'll write it down. That's what I'm doing. Can you imagine? That? What's the irony of that? I'm writing it down. Momentum. Momento. 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 See, yeah. I couldn't remember the name. That was less than 10 minutes. I couldn't remember the name. <laughs> Who is in that movie? I got to look it up. The great thing about uh, losing your memory in, in today's day and age is you can look things up, right? If you can remember what to look up. I remember though when we when I was a kid, my father was always he was always trying to come up with trying to think up things. Ah, I, I can't. I got to remember the name of that actor. Well, you know that even when we were in school. Oh, what was that movie? Who was in that movie? You know, and you, and you try to ask every person you know. You know. Yeah, yeah. And then you give them the description of the movie. Who else was and in the movie? There was no way to, to check it. So they got this new Terminator movie out, huh? Schwarzenegger's in it. The Terminator has gotten older, and um, I guess Linda Hamilton's back too. Oh, yeah, James sorry. Cameron's directing. Should be good. Oh, Christopher Nolan directed this movie. He Christopher Nolan is the one who did the uh, Batman. This must have been his first, you know, thing. Guy Pierce plays the um, the main role. He's really young here. This is two thousand. This movie came out. Carrie Ann Moss, if you know who she is, she's from uh, the Matrix movies. She's in it too. She's really good. Check it out, guys. That's my uh, my movie review of the week. Moment. <laughs> Next week, Romania. Hmm. Big show. Yeah. We go. Did they put up the competitor list yet? Is Cedric doing funny. that show too? Yeah, Cedric's doing it. Oh, that was smart of him. Yeah, I'm surprised Nathan's not doing it. Juan is doing it. Well, Nathan's qualified for the Olympia now. I guess he figures yeah, all he can do is know, lose. I mean, you, you, you're on a roll. Yep, it was a, it was a, it was a very narrow victory. You know, we talked about that last week. The fact that you know Juan was winning after pre. You, you know what I found out? I'm glad you brought that up. We talked last week about Juan versus. Nathan versus on win at the um yeah at that show last week, and I was speaking to Juan's wife. She texted me because she heard our show, and well, actually, she heard my my wrap up of the whole thing. I don't think we I don't think the show is out yet because it was the day after we did the radio show last week. Mm -hmm. But on the scorecard, Juan was winning after prejudging, and Nathan was third. He wasn't even yeah. second, and then. At the at the finals, Nathan won or came in first. Juan was second, and it was they were tied. And somehow, Nathan won the show. But what I didn't know, I mean, we we didn't know. I thought maybe they were on separate days the shows, but it wasn't. It was all what Sunday. Are you talking about? It was like ten minutes apart. We were they were like yeah, it. like ten minutes apart though. Yeah. <clears throat> it's crazy. How he lost that show, I don't know. How could you change your decision in 10 minutes? It doesn't make sense to me. Stuff like that drives me crazy. It's like when you see these, uh, you know, some of these master shows where they have like multiple, you know, age categories. 
You could do 35 and over. You could do 40 and over. You could do 45 and, and over. Yeah, the same guys. Well, that's a different judging panel, so it's different opinions. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's not. They they don't they. It's the same judging panel. Sometimes the class after class, yeah. and then all of a sudden I didn't know that. Yeah, and, and that. one guy beats another guy, another one, and then they they swap places in the next class. So it's it's. It's tough. Look, it's tough. It's tough to judge that many people. I don't. I don't. I, that's why I don't want to be a judge. I don't want to be blamed. It's too much stress. Oh, they did come out the. Um, they got the competitors list. That's good. So Romania Muscle Fest, pro bodybuilding show, big big lineup. Let's see who any uh, anyone we uh, know here. Max Charles. Regan Grimes. He's been getting a lot of uh, hype. Cedric. Juan is doing it again. That's good for him. Those guys will be battling it out, I'm sure. So it looks like it'll probably be between Juan, Cedric, and I guess uh, Regan, right? And Matt with Max in there as well. Well, Max wasn't really in shape in the last show. No. So I don't, I don't think Max would be a factor unless, unless for some reason it was just off water. Who knows? Yeah, the, I, you know, I'm not just saying this comes because you're, you're talking to me now. But the best Max ever looked, as far as I'm concerned, was when you worked with him. I don't, I don't know why he ever left you. Yeah, but that, that was when he did the. I mean, he was off the hook when he did the Arnold that year. I mean, he was, he was not only ripped, but he was big, or not only big, but he was ripped. Which, and, it was. Um, Oh, I forgot. It was it was the best his back had looked, which is always a problem. You know, every bodybuilder's got their own legit problems. Here's the problem. You got him in the best shape of his life, and that's what he needs to do. Then someone whispered in his ear, you got to be bigger and fuller. And blah, 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 blah. Well, wait, I'm still bragging. He won Tampa, Tampa too, by the way. Yeah. He won the Tampa Pro when I helped him. True. No, but I mean, what, what happens is people... Um, they, they they got the people whispering in his ear. Oh, you got to be bigger and fuller. Blah, 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 everybody's blah, blah. whispering in everyone's ear. Believe me, dude. These guys Believe listen, me. though. They listen, unfortunately. Well, because there's so many people. That's. I mean, it's. In, in other words, it's not. You know, what's interesting, Dave. It's not like. You know. Okay, Chris, are you prepping Jay Cutler? Yeah. Hmm. How many people really talk personally to Jay before there was the internet and all that? Blah <laughs> blah blah. You know, maybe like thirty people, and right. maybe one person might say, "Well, you know, Jay, you could do this, you could do that, or you could work with this guy, or you got to be this or that." Now, you know, somebody like Brandon Curry, who's Mr. Olympia, is probably talking on the internet to like five thousand people at on, on any given month, right? And and he's probably reading another 12,000 comments about his physique. You're probably right. And there's a lot of whisper, you know, well, you got to be better, you got to be tidy, you got to be this. And then what eventually it comes like, you know, you got to leave oxygen, you got to do this, you got to do that, you got to leave oxygen, you got to be peeled, you got to work with this guy, you know, the whispering. Yeah. And the fact of the matter is, regardless of, you know, I was critical of his quote condition, he's improved. A lot, a lot, a lot, doing what he's been doing in Kuwait for the last four years. He'd be crazy to leave there. Exactly. But somebody will say, you know what? If you just switch to fish <laughs> and you cut the sodium on the third Tuesday of the month, yeah. you yeah. know, and you carved up on applesauce, I'm telling you, even Paul Dillette told me you'd be the winner. You're right. You're right. Unfortunately, they got you know they got almost every class in this show. It's a wings of strength. Another another wings wings oh, of strength wings finance of strength. show. I didn't know it's a wings of strength. Well, is let them. me ask you this question: R Romania isn't that isn't that where a, a Romania, uh, what's her name Alina Pope is from? I believe so. Yeah, and that, I think she dates uh, Jake Wood, so that's probably why they're doing it there. So I think that's. I mean, it's great. I'm glad that they're doing shows overseas. Me too. Me too. There's a big 212 lineup. The 212 lineup is going to be off the hook as well. I mean, it's it's what a great thing for Romania. I mean, they, they, this is they're probably rolling out the red carpet for them. I'm what sure. do you think? Watch, Dave. You're so easy to predict. When I say Romania, what do you think of? Of course. I'm I'm drawing a blank. Um, 
Oh, come on. Athlete. Oh, uh, Nadia Comaneci. <laughs> Dave, you're perfect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nadia Comaneci. Chris and I should play that game, you know, where you already have to like, uh, what is it called? Remember, you say one word and they have to, and they have to give you the answer. Yeah. Uh, what was I that? The twenty five thousand dollars pyramid. Remember yeah. that show? We'd be great. $25. I'd be like Blackman. You'd be like yeah. Glutes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Ding. I'd be like Googly Eye. You'd be like Nasher <laughs> somebody. Yeah. <laughs> give me another one. <laughs> Um, you can't even think. Yeah, you you got to write it down. You already exploding. Forgot. What is it? Exploding arms. Uh, uh, Valentina. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because you, you you're right. You give one word, and then you can give another word, right? Something like that. Yeah. That's so funny. Yeah, then, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, not even gonna, I'm gonna get myself in trouble. I'm not gonna even go there. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say grapefruit. No, 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 no. Dave, Dave watch. Uh, balls. Um, uh, Dave and Chris. Uh, 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 let's see what else would be. Uh, Targets, <laughs> playground balls. I guess it'd be things you kick. Oh. No, I was trying to think things you kick out. But that's a different show. Yeah, that's a. Uh, what would that be? I don't even remember. Maybe that is that. What, what show is that from? That might be from the same pyramid oh. show. I don't remember. Too long. Richard ago. Dawson was on that show for a while before he got the. Before he got Family Feud, and then he got kicked off Family Feud way before the Me Too, Too movement because he used to like try to bang the chicks backstage. Is that why he got kicked off? I just thought he got old. He did that for a long time. I don't think he got kicked off it, did he? I don't know. I think he just it's got old. It's amazing. He, he, he would have gotten kicked heroes. off it. He would have gotten kicked off it nowadays, definitely. Oh, yeah. Well, he was high or drunk through half the, <laughs> half the shows. It seemed like he was, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, he'd, he'd come out in a bow tie and he'd French kiss like the twelve-year-old daughter and then the, like the grandmother. <laughs> he would kiss all the women contestants. I, know. I on remember, the I remember. I, no one thought there was anything wrong with it, though. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> <laughs> no one, everyone thought he was great. No one, no one complained about it. Maybe he only did it on the show. Maybe he wasn't really banging the girls, you know? If you only do it on the show, then and you don't, you don't get in trouble. It's when you try to do it off the show that you get in trouble. Well, he figured if you do it so out in the open, he could never get I thought he was gay, anything. to be honest. I didn't even think he was. I think well, maybe it was just a big cover for his, you know? Yeah. Maybe he was gay and it was just a big cover. <laughs> right? Could have been. That's why they let him do it. They're like, he's gay. Who cares? He stuck his tongue there. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, but he's no gay. enjoyment from he's it. Gay. Isn't it funny? No one's threatened by gay people. He's gay. Don't worry about it. Anyway, it was a crazy week. We had a lot of good coverage. You saw the uh, iron debate we had with uh, Fuad Abiyad and uh, well, Luke Sando. They had yeah. done a podcast together where they were talking about. I guess they were like kind of making fun of like Lee Priest. Lee Priest and I had done an iron rage about how the '90s bodybuilders, you know, you know, Lee was saying that they, you know, they were in better shape and that they, you know, trained harder and a lot of that. So they, they were, you know, they kind of like on their show were kind of throwing poke and fun at Lee. So I'm like, uh, so on, when we did our show, I said, well, Lee, let's challenge them to an iron debate. So at first, Foo, I didn't want to come on. I don't know why. He's busy. Then he changed his mind. I'm glad he did because Fuad's a great, great arguer. You know, he's 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 good for Iron Debate because he actually has a strong opinion. He's not afraid to give it. So it was good. It was a good show. I thought. You know, on the Iron Debates, I don't really get too involved. I kind of let everyone else argue, and I just kind of give my last. I give the last word, my my opinion. But I find it interesting. I like to watch him. I'm kind of I'm like wondering what's going to happen next. Who's going to say what? 
And it's good. It was strong because everyone had a very strong opinion. And, you know, it was all in fun, of course. No one, no, everyone liked each other on the show. So it didn't really matter. I did a, um, a, a, a rant this past week. I don't know if you heard, saw that one about this um, this woman who was a cyclist. She set the world record in Masters uh, World uh, Championships. Mm-hmm. But she used to be a guy. She actually looks like a guy still, too. But So she's a trans... I guess she's a you know transgender. She obviously yeah. had a sex... She had the sex change operation. So she's, you know... Uh, a female, you know, anatomically speaking, genetically though, she's still a male. You know, she was born a male. She looks pretty masculine, you know. But she is competing with these women, and she, you know, these women can't beat him, can't beat her. And I said it's not fair. I said I don't think it's fair. I said, it's, you know, they they probably need a separate you know division for transgenders if we're going to have a lot of them. But but a a man. A person who's born a man develops, you know, bone structure and and muscle mass based on being exposed to testosterone their whole, you know, you know, teenage years during puberty. You can cut their balls off all you want and take the testosterone away from them, but you're not removing the structural changes that have differentiated that that young boy or that young child, you know, from from the female young child, you know, it changes the body per- permanently. So it's just not fair. Just like I see this, 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 in some of these MMA fights, there's a there's a former guy who's a woman now, and you know, pummeling these some of these these ladies. I, I just it's well, stupid. Who should be? You know, who should be making the decision on that? Probably. Who? Trump. I, I guess. <laughs> I think the the other female competitors. Well, they don't. Not, of course, they don't want to lose. To they don't want to lose. Well, I mean, but they're not they, going to back they, down they either from the competition. But of course, they got to be pissed. I would be pissed off if I were them. They're training their whole life, and they got to go against it. You know, it's just unfair. You know, it's bad enough they got to worry about you know these doping tests and everything like that. Because I'm sure I don't I don't believe anyone's clean at these elite levels. But it's bad enough they got to go against that. But you know what? It, the, the truth is that. You could put these athletes on on drugs. The, the, the men are still have an advantage. We just know that it's it, it, that's why there's men's and women's divisions, right? If yeah. if there wasn't if there wasn't an unfair advantage, man versus woman, everyone would compete against everyone. So why they think it's okay to allow a man who has changed himself physically? You know, cosmetically, really, is what it is, right? I mean, if you, if, you, if a man has his penis removed and he had, they create a vagina out of it, okay, it's just it's it's a it's they're, they're basically you know changing the the paint coat on 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 a car. What's under the engine is still what's under the engine, right? Mm-hmm. So that I, I had a, I took it, you know. Did people disagree with you, or I don't know. I don't think so. I think everyone. Just, I think pretty much everyone agreed with me. But I'm sure there's some transgender athletes who probably didn't agree with me. But yeah, I I said I I work with I started working with a transgender um, female who converted to a male, and he won a uh, classic physique show. He's only 129 right. pounds though, you know, and because he's got a very small frame like a woman would, even though he's a man. And I don't think there's anything wrong with women, you know, former women who are now men competing in the men's division because they don't have an advantage. If anything, they have a disadvantage. I think him competing in the men's division is is, is great because he's like, you know what, I don't care. I want, I'm a man. I want to compete with the men. <laughs> but when you go the other direction, there's, a, there's an event. Now, in bodybuilding, there probably isn't. If you're a man and you want to compete in women's bodybuilding, you probably won't have an advantage because you, you're going to have a very masculine-looking physique. It's probably not. You probably won't do well even though you might be bigger than some of these other girls. But when you're talking about performance and who's stronger and, and faster and stuff like that, y- you can't allow it. I'm, I'm sorry. It's, you know, it's just, it just can't be done. You know, it's not fair to the other, you know, people. I'm sorry. I, and I don't care what her, if they want to say, well, her testosterone is, they try to say, is the same as these other girls. It doesn't matter. Her physique is, her physique has been changed because she was a male when she was born. The one, the one proviso I might say that it's okay is, let's say 
like I don't know if you've seen the show I Am Jazz. It's about this this little boy who at you know was, you know when he was like four years old said I I'm a girl, and he never went through puberty. They put him on androgen blockers, and he just had a sex change. Actually, she did um, when she turned eighteen. But there's a whole—it's like a reality show. She's she never developed as a man. I could see her being—I would be okay with her doing it because she never she never had any exposure to testosterone in her body, except in utero. And I don't necessarily know if that matters. So. That's uh, you know, I'm not saying I'm right. I'm just saying that's my opinion. No, I'm thinking about it. It's it's. Um, I don't think it has only to do with exposure to well, use the word exposure to testosterone in the teen years. I mean, there's more to it than that. I mean, my, you know what I mean. My six year old runs around with. Right, the he's got an advantage over the girls that are yeah, six years yeah. old. I mean, he's like way bigger, you know, stronger, faster, for the most part, than, of course, all the girls, let alone all the boys. So there's got to, there's some advantage there. I mean, if I banged into him at six years old, right. not looking where I'm going, and banged into his little girlfriend who was over our house the other day, right. you know, he, he'd bounce back. And sure. I'd probably, you know, she'd probably break her shoulder. Yeah, no. It's 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 a tough it's a tough thing to talk about because you want to do the thing that's right, you know, morally, morally and ethically and emotionally, but unfortunately, you know, it's like it's like with little league, not everyone can win. You, you, I know you don't want to make the kids feel bad, but you know what? Not everyone. If I'm sorry, if you if you make the decision that you want to become a, a woman. As a man, you lose the ability to compete, okay, athletically, okay, with your new chosen sex. You have to cheat. She, she should still be competing with the men. Look at uh, Janae Marie. Janae Marie, who used to be Matt Croc, he's mm-hmm. decided he wants to be a woman, right? Okay, and that's fine. And he's, and he, but he's decided, I still want to bodybuild. So what is he doing? He's doing the nationals as a man because he, he knows it's ridiculous. He can't do the women's nationals. Even though he's decided he's, he wants to, you know, he, he's a woman. And he, he you know, dresses as a woman. He goes to work as a woman. I had him on the show. I'm going to get him on again. We're going to talk about that. I want to get his opinion on this whole thing. Because I guarantee he probably would agree with us. Or agree with me. I don't know what your opinion is. But it's not fair for him to do the women's. He said so he's going to do men's. Even though he is a woman now, he'll still compete with the men just to keep it fair. If this... this if this woman wanted to cycle so bad and she so loves cycling, then go cycle against the men. It's a difference. So you won't set a world records. Who cares? At no, least you can I compete. Agree with you. This is my opinion. I agree with you. Okay, good. We're not saying you can't compete. Just can't compete with the women. Sorry. Yes, you're cosmetically a woman, but you're still genetically a male. Well, probably any father... Maybe a father would be biased, but I'm trying to think of a good, like, innate, weird test. Like, if your daughter was competing in the same race and was getting second, you'd say, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, this is not fair. I'd be pissed off. I'm sure my daughter would, too. But, 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 the flip side, right? If, if, If your daughter was in the same race and she was getting second to somebody who has always been a woman, you'd say, like, well, you know, she smoked you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if if it's legit, then it's legit. You know, that's all. That's all there is to it. By the way, if, if anyone's wondering why my voice is cracking, no, I'm not going through puberty, or I'm not becoming a woman, or anything like that. But uh, okay, I taught my guru course this past weekend. Whenever I teach that secrets of becoming a diet guru course, by the tenth hour that I'm teaching, yeah, I my voice disappears. And talk about my, you know, being like your father. My father would do that. He would get laryngitis all the time. If he had to teach, like if he had to teach, like uh, sometimes my he would go and teach summer school. He would teach like night school, in addition to like day to make a few extra bucks. He would get laryngitis all the time. I'm like, I'm like, holy shit! I'm like, my dad, I'm I'm getting laryngitis now. I literally, my voice is like, I can't, I couldn't speak yesterday. At the end of the class, I was like whispering. I'm actually drinking a diet ginger ale, 
just to keep my uh, my vocal cords uh, stimulated. <laughs> Good class, though. We filled it once again. You know, it's funny. I, I did like a, a last minute, like we had one spot open. because I, I usually do 15 people in each class. Mm-hmm. And we had one spot open. And I think the two days before I said, hey, I got one spot open, guys. This is your chance. You know, because I always know there's always someone home who's saying, yeah, I probably should take it. But uh, yeah, yeah. And then, and then if you remind them at the last minute, hey, guys, there's a spot. Here's your opportunity. And someone someone signed up at the last minute and came. But so we got 15 people. But they were the class had been really good. Like there's so many people that are just really interested in learning about, you know, how, you know, nutrition and um, performance enhancing drugs. It's it's really probably 80%, I'd say, nutrition and supplementation. Because that's really the hard. That's 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 everything. The drugs are, are not that hard. It's like it's like when you're talking about in bodybuilding. Well, how much is the drugs responsible for your physique? Well, probably 20 percent, maybe, maybe, right? The rest is diet and, and you know how you train and all that stuff. It's the same thing with knowledge. I mean, the drugs are you know important to know about, but they're not the most important part of being a good coach. Being a good, good, good coach is knowing how to implement you know proper diet supplementation. You know, cardio. You know, you know when to do what variables to change and all that kind of stuff. So, I'm glad people enjoy it. And people came from where? Everywhere. Everywhere. You know, I always ask people, yeah, who came the furthest? So one guy said, "Well, I came from Panama. <laughs> it's Panama City, Panama." He was a, he's a, he's an American guy, but he was he retired down there. And I said, "Oh, that's that's pretty far." And then someone else, came, someone came in late, and he's like, "Oh, I came from what do you say? I came from." He had to take like five flights here. He had some like crazy island he's from or something like that. He had like four connections or something like that. I'm like, well, you win the you win the, the door prize. I've had people come from China. I've had people come from India. I've had people come from Dubai. Uh, I've had people come from Australia. It's amazing. But I, I love it. I said, you I know, know what? You I tell these people in the class. I said, it's important. The reason I don't put this online, this course, the reason I don't let people... You know, teleconference in like the you know like some of these college courses is because you need to be there in the room with me. There's an energy there exchange being occurring. I said it's like making a pilgrimage. There's something um, special about when you have to actually inconvenience yourself and go someplace and put yourself in an environment, okay, to learn something that's very important to you, and it, you absorb it better. It has meaning to you. You you remember the experience. I said, and um, I said, uh, you'll see. When I, and at the end of the class, they all said, "We, I get what you're saying. I understand." Let me know when you have the next one. I'm, I'm going to call the local Hilton, and I'm <laughs> going to book like 15 rooms at a discounted rate, and then I'm going to send them. I'm going to sell them, upsell them to the people coming from all over. Yeah, you should do that. That's a good idea. I'll say, I'll, and I'll send them there. I'll be like the, uh, you know. Some of these IPB shows, you got to use our tanning company. You know, use use uh, Dave's code. You know, Big Snakes number four, <laughs> and you get a twenty percent discount. Right, right, exactly. <laughs> no, it was good though. People really uh, they enjoy the class, and uh, I, I look. I encourage other people to take it too. It's it's, and you know what I tell people? I I added a part of the course um, that I never did before is how to market yourself because people always ask me. You know, Dave. I love the course, but can you tell us how to actually yeah, run they a business? Make money. They want to make money. Right. Well, yeah. yeah. What? How do we go back doing a business? Make the fa- tell them to make fake before and afters. Just Photoshop oh, no. the hell out of them. Look, one of the things that, that's very important that people have to understand is that if you're going to be a coach, you have to run it like a business, which means you should, number one, incorporate yourself. Just take out a corporation. And the advantage of, they said, of this is that you can deduct Everything you do, from meals to driving to a car lease to gas oh, yeah. to <laughs> buying supplements because you're doing market research for your, you know, whatever, to taking education, coming to this course. I said you could have deducted, okay? Because you're paid yourself, right? You would, well, you, we went to got 100 percent deduction, but you would have deducted your travel, your hotel, your food here. And the course, uh, the, the cost of the course. My friend Brian Hordick takes the course every year, or every at least every other year. I'm like Brian, you coming back again? You know, he's like, ah, I got, I got, I want to refresh my brain. 
I know you're always going to say some new stuff that I that I haven't heard before. And I said he's like it's a tax. I write it off my ta- uh, I write it off my taxes. I said you're smart. And so I, I so I was explaining all this to people, you know, all these deductions, and they were like, "You can do that." I'm like, yeah, "Well, you're running up your personal. You're a, a diet coach. If you travel to a show for your clients, that's a deduction. You can deduct that. You just got to have a good account." And I said, "And you should start a quick. You should <laughs> start a quick. Generate. They haven't generated an income yet. No, and I already got yeah. a deducting every. Year. You're talking. You can deduct your jet." <laughs> yeah, exactly. Aaron, Aaron deducts his uh, his private jet Why flights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's got to fly all over the country. The only problem the- is you got to make more money than you. You can't deduct more than you make. So. Yeah. You know, well, I remember this is a true story. I when I went up to stay with uh, Kim and Greg Kovacs back in the day, you know, Kim used to do. I don't know if she was an accountant. She did all of Greg's taxes. In Canada, it's weird. You could like, I think you can deduct like fifty percent. Like you can get. Uh, like you can get it like like if there's a lot of deductions you can do but you have to save every receipt kim had every fucking receipt she it was like unbelievable like like i don't save anything i'm like i'll just use the the, the credit card statement you know she had every little freaking receipt you know and this was back in the 90s before really computers were huge i couldn't believe it i could she they deducted everything Greg's like uh, uh, hemorrhoid cream they, they would write off, you know, because <laughs> when he would poop, you know, <laughs> was a, so much poop would come out, he would have a problem. She'd have to go, I told you, into the bathroom and wipe his butt, you know, because he couldn't reach. Well, told- it could be part of the $20,000 pyramid, meals, uh, courses, <laughs> uh, airplanes, things you deduct. <laughs> You, you you know the story about when I I've we've told the story I think before about when Nasser has stayed with Greg. Oh yeah, you've told the story. And how you know because Nasser couldn't get his he couldn't get back into the country. You know that story, right? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what happened. Something with his passport. He couldn't get back. He couldn't get from Canada back into the U.S. Cause something was out of order or something like that. And so he had to stay with Greg for like a month. And they were so nice, and Kim was so nice, and they would. Get, they were feeding him every day, and they were giving him, you know, steroids, whatever juice he needed, and stuff like that. You know, they didn't even they didn't charge him because Greg yeah, was what, like. A, what, what happened the minute he got back into the U.S.? Oh, he was bad mouthing them, you know. I'm sure. No, but you know, Nasser, no, 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 graciousness. You know, he doesn't. He just expected it. You know, first of all, they don't. Nasser really didn't respect women very much anyway, but. Oh, yeah, Kim Kovac. Yes, yes, they did feed me, but the but the food they had given me was the second rate food because Greg would get the uh, the 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 prime cuts and I would get the uh, the table scraps. Yes, she did prepare them for me, and 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 I know she did not charge me, but I know what they would do. They would give me the stuff that they <laughs> that they were saving for the dog. <laughs> <laughs> I think even one of the bowls might have been had the word Fido on it. I think it was one of the the pup the, the dogs bowls they would feed to me because uh, Greg would have uh, eight hundred dishes because he would have to eat fourteen times a day and they didn't have any uh, and they did not want to uh, use any of the silverware and the dishes for me so I had to share with the dog. And they would give me the, 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 the when they would trim the, the steak, uh, I would get the, the fatty pieces. You know what's the scary or sad part of that? It's true. Well, I know it's true. The, the scary part of that or the sad part of it is they were both ridiculously big and they're both dead. Oh, I know. It's terrible. It's, you know, that's what I'm, I, I, when I make, when I tell NASA stories and, and Kovac stories, I'm honoring them. I'm the, I it's there's no ever there's never any like disrespect at all. Even even though sometimes it's, I you know with, with Nasser I kind of mock him a little bit, but uh, it's a shame. I I loved both of them. Even though Nasser did, you know had a, it was really uh, sour at the end of his uh, career, but I still liked him because he was such a character. I would if I had video footage of the two of them and and you know staying together. Yeah. Imagine. Imagine the reality. Imagine if, like today, um, if they had like an Nassar, Instagram. Can you imagine Nasser on Iron Debate with with uh, Fuad, <laughs> and the insults would be going everywhere. Yes, yeah, yeah. He would be insulting their physiques, absolutely. If I had the way, uh, like you, Fuad, two hundred thirty pounds, I was three ninety <laughs> with, with abs. And if I had the way, uh, like two twelve, like you. 
and and Luke, uh, you work with Chris, and you you still not in you still not peeled like me. No, because he would have Nas would have some. Nobody had more to say than Nas. He would always get in the last word. Oh yeah, he would he would find whatever their weaknesses, and he would, would he would exploit, exploit it. it like to yeah. death to the point where they would be so so insecure with themselves they couldn't even like respond. Probably. Yeah. Yeah, he was. We look. We lost a good one. Nasser could have been one of the great uh, commentators. Oh, you know, he'd um, be great at play he, by play. He loved competing, but you know what? He he missed his calling because he should have been. He would have been way better of a commentator. I, I agree. Than as an athlete, even even though he he almost won the Olympia, it doesn't matter. He would have had. Uh, he could have made money. He if he would have had. Imagine if he he just died too soon. If he would have had his own YouTube channel where he just oh, you know yeah, for sure went on there and just. You know, just complained about everything. NASA rant. It could have been that he would have had a million subscribers because he could have oh, talked a, about anything. Just he, a wrap up from bodybuilding shows because he's been through it. Oh, you know? absolutely. I mean, he would have insulted up. everyone. Everyone would have hated him, but it doesn't matter. He would have had a millions of people watching his his crap. Oh yes, uh, oh, Brandon Curry. Yes, uh, yeah. Oh, he has. Yes, he has a, a waist. And he has arms, but he has nothing else. You know, I, I, I would have beaten him easily. You know, uh, he has none of this. That that he would have, just, you know, he would have, he would have destroyed him. You know. Yeah. And the funny thing is, he, he doesn't even. He wouldn't even care if anyone you criticize him. Doesn't even matter. He, but he would have been good. He would have. We missed it. Even Greg was good. I got Greg on a couple of radio yeah, shows, yeah, and I had him write some long articles long. for Rx Muscle for a while. The Kovacian. If you go back and, and, and watch it, he told some interesting oh. fucking stories. They're probably still they're still on Rx Muscle if you do a search. He was good. I got to I got to find one of the radio shows I had him on and try to pull it up because he, he told some NASA stories. I, I I extracted some of the NASA information out of him. I gotta go back and find it. I'll play some. Maybe I'll play some clips on the radio show. Yeah, next week. So some takeout. What's it? Side takeouts. Take Greg, out. Greg. You know, Greg was very funny. He was one of the funniest guys I ever hung out with. No one knew it because he was very quiet. But once he was comfortable with you, where he would talk, he was hysterically funny. He imitated people. He he had a great sense of humor, and I would laugh. You know, nonstop hanging out with him. I mean, it was it was. That's how funny he was. People just don't know. He was hysterical. And the way him and his wife at the time, Kim, would interact with each other was like watching, uh, you know, like Archie Bunker and, and Edith, you know. It was because <laughs> she was really like a slave to him. Although she was the brains of the operation because she ran the whole business, their, their business, you know. She negotiated all the contracts and all the guest posings. And believe me, talk to any promoters that had to deal with her. She, they, I couldn't even believe the shit that she would get. I'm like, they're paying you how much money? She would get like 15 grand from these Middle Eastern promoters. They'd get two first class plane tickets. They'd be in a five star hotel. They'd be being fed eight times a day. I couldn't believe it. I'm like, are you serious? You know, and I was a big guy at the time doing it. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm a fucking loser. He's getting $15,000 in appearance and he was booked. Dude. Maybe maybe she's better than Dan Solomon. She's way better. People wanted Greg. They wanted Greg, and she knew it. She knew they wanted him, and she was not going to sell him short. And these guys, you know, who was who, think about it? Who was four hundred pounds? What guest poser can you get to be four hundred pounds? Rami is like a joke compared to what he was. Yeah, but he's but he wasn't put together. It doesn't like matter though. They wanted to go see him. It was a freak show. It wasn't it wasn't a bodybuilding. Yeah. It wasn't for bodybuilding. It wasn't he wasn't getting paid that kind of money to, to appear at the Mr. Olympia. He was getting paid to go on to go to one of these Middle Eastern shows or to, or to a you know a, who knows where he was appearing. It was all over. He would go all over the world. This guy and Muscle Tech. He was the first Muscle Tech guy. Remember, before Muscle Tech was anything, yeah. they put him on the map too because. Even though, and they were paying him a lot of money at the time. They were paying him over a hundred grand a year, and that was he wasn't even a pro initially. And you know, he had a lot of fringe benefits from that one too. But they had him in every ad in, in Muscle Mag, if you remember. There was like twenty pages every issue. And remember, the only place to get information in the nineties was the magazines. So, I mean, who didn't know Greg Kovacs just from those Muscle Deck ads? Everyone knew him. 
and he was 400 pounds, and, and they had this whole thing that he, you know, he was lifting ridiculously heavy weights, which he was very strong. He was very. I saw him. Um, I saw him incline bench on a Smith machine. He always used the Smith machine. I don't know why he didn't do free weights, but it was, he was like benching like 750 pounds for reps on the Smith machine. Now it might be a little easier, obviously, than doing it on on a bench press, but it's. I couldn't do it, and I was fucking crazy strong, you know. I, yeah, no, I wouldn't I even get under do, it. I wouldn't yeah, even I try think, to do it. Yeah, I think I saw him do uh, shoulder press on the Smith machine in Canada when I was in the gym. This was like, oh my gosh. He was very strong. Like 1990. Yeah. He was doing uh, 405. For, for, for reps, right? Yeah, he was doing it for like four to six. He was strong. He was very, yeah, very strong. Yeah, it looked strong. like legit, you know. He was crazy. He was huge. I think I. He was three. When I asked him his weight, it was the first time. He was three eighty-five. He looked better when he was actually smaller, but you know, he when he turned pro, he actually looked really good. He had a nice physique, small waist. He was wide as hell. He and he got too big, you know, because he wanted to be bigger, 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 bigger. bigger. The, the, the first time I heard about him was when Mike Francois went up to Canada. You saw him? Yeah, he did an appearance at in Toronto at the Muscle Mag. Whatever store. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, that's, that was their home. And place. Greg showed up, and Mike called me and said, "There's a guy up here, three eighty five. What do you think?" I said, <laughs> "I don't believe you." <laughs> <laughs> Close. <laughs> and uh, anyways, Mike Mike was like raving about his size. I'm like three eighty five. And I'm on. sure he was asking Mike a million questions, like 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 a fanboy, because Greg yeah. always. He was very humble with other bodybuilders. He wanted to know what everyone was taking and doing. Yeah, well, he, Mike had sent me a picture somehow of him like a couple weeks later. It was a printed picture to say, here's the guy. <laughs> and I thought he looked like who? Which wrestler? Oh, I thought you were going to say he looked a little like Paul DeMeo, but yeah. Um... No, Andre the Giant. Oh, well, I mean, but he doesn't look like Andre, Andre, Andre the Giant. He just had a big physique. I mean, he was just modest. Well, his head was big, too. His first big bodybuilder. You know, first, yeah. He had the big noggin. Yeah. He he was enormous, but he was one of the nicest people you'll ever meet. I, I loved him. I miss him. I mean, it was a shame because, you know what, I used to talk to him every once in a while. And I actually talked to him probably three or four days before he died because he had just had like a heart. He had a surgery to fix a valve, I think. On his, in his heart and everything went well he was like it was three days after the surgery he said I feel good I actually feel better than I before I had the surgery I have all this energy now and I'm like thinking oh the fucking thank god you know they, I said how did the rest of your heart look they said everything looked great I have no blockages nothing I said phenomenal I said I'm glad you did it he's like me too he goes I kept putting it off I, you know, I was having symptoms I was fatigued and because I guess he was getting like a regurge because the valve wasn't closing properly and who the fuck knows what happened? He might have had an arrhythmia for all I know. Yeah, I don't what know. happened? He died. He, died. he had some kind of heart attack. So he just dropped in this in his yeah. apartment. He was with his girlfriend, and he just collapsed. That was it. Heart attack. Died. There's look. Whenever you have a heart surgery, there's always, you know, there's always that you know percentage chance that you can you can die right after suddenly yeah. for no reason. Yeah. Um, this is crazy, but. Yeah, the world took him too too soon. He, him, and Nass are tremendous talents. The, they got the gift of the of of a mouthpiece on them, like like no, nothing I've ever seen. Nasser's problem was when he was competing, he kept quiet. He would only he would only t- complain behind the scenes because he didn't want to like screw his placings up. <laughs> if he would imagine if he would have like had a big mouth and not cared, like like Sean Ray or you know like Lee Priest, forget about it. He had something to say about everyone. I would have loved to hear what he had to say about, like, you know, Wayne D'Amelia and all those people that he was, you know, (laughs) competing with, you know, or working for at the time. It would have been great. Anyway, did you see the um, the Netflix movie or documentary Game Change the The Game Changers? Which one? It's called The Game Changers. No, I did see it. You did. Everyone's been talking about it. Yeah, you saw it though. No, I have not. Why oh, am okay. I going to see it? I'm doing radio. You know what? I don't, yeah, I don't usually have time either. But ever, so many people had been telling me, you have to watch this, that I just put it on my computer. Like I have a little iPad. I just let it run while I was um, doing work. And I just took notes. 
because it was annoying me. It was it was really it was it was hard for me to watch it because it was annoying. It was very it basically from people who haven't seen it. Um, I think a lot of people have seen it. It it's, it tries to lay out a case for why you should be a vegan, okay, and not eat meat. And it was very well done in terms of how they filmed it. They put it together, edited it. I mean, it was absolutely top notch. But it was it was so skewed, okay, how they did the thing that I I had to do a um, a response a to it, a rant on it, and I did a rant, and people seem to I like guess. it a lot. Have you seen? You haven't seen my rant, but you'll you'll no. agree. You'll agree with the whole rant. I'm sure. Well, you will. I mean, dude, yeah. The problem is that they use all the. First of all, they cherry picked a couple of like elite athletes that, that happen to be vegans or have switched to veganism, and they claim that you know they're they're, they're better athletes because of that, and, which is bullshit, obviously. But also, they found like you know there was like one in every sport. You know, there's not like there's like 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 hundreds of them to pull from. And I, you know, my point and obviously my rant was that you know if you took Ronnie Coleman and made him a vegan, he'd still be Mr. Olympia. He probably wouldn't lose. Well, maybe not team. though. I don't think he would. No, I'm not saying. I'm would. not saying if he started out as a vegan. I'm saying if he was I Mr. Just, Olympia. I think, I think if I think if you take the top five guys in the Olympia, have become vegans, and let's see what they look like next year. I, I don't think they would change very much. To be honest, I do. Not it would take it would take years. My my point though is that all the scientific evidence they showed as to why you would want to be a vegan, as far as you know blood vessel wall dilation, endothelial cell function, um, you know, vit- the fact that we need vitamin C, all, all these, you know, all these like reasons why you would want to be a vegan are all valid. But the, what they didn't stress is that you can still eat meat and get the and, and plants and get all the benefits that they're telling you about, okay? <laughs> you know, while you're eating meat, you know, you don't have to... They're not mutually exclusive. In other words, you don't have to be a vegan to get all the benefits of being of eating plants. We're omnivores. They even try to at one point say, you know, the uh, if you look at the uh, intestinal tract of a human versus a carnivore like a lion, we have a much longer intestinal tract because we're meant to eat plants to extract food. I said, well, if you if you look at the intestinal tract of a human versus a cow who's meant to only eat plants. Their intestinal tract is way different than ours. Longer, they have like three stomachs, you know, so they can extract, you know, the, the nutrients from the, the, the grass, something that we can't do. So, bad example. You know, so they were using like, if, in other words, if you don't have a good science background, you can be completely swayed by this. And I've had a, a bunch of people say to me, you think I would benefit from, from being a vegan? I'm like, no, 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 no. So... It is what it is. Well, we, you know, body, had bodybuilding you know, vegans are not successful. <laughs> I always say, I always say, in terms of bodybuilding, show, where's the vegetarian bodybuilder who's like done something? The only person that I ever heard of that was a uh, vegetarian, Andreas Kahl. Andreas Kahl. But you know what? I Dude, interviewed one hundred and sixty-eight pounds. I mean, I'm no, sure. No, 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 no. Don't you remember? I interviewed him at that same Masters Olympia that we talked. Uh, Masters Olympia. He he actually told me he wasn't a vegan. He was a vegetarian. He was. He just didn't eat red meat. He ate everything else. <laughs> he just didn't eat red meat. That's all. He wasn't a steak eater. <laughs> he he didn't eat red meat. He only ate uh, like fish and and chicken and uh, and eggs and stuff like that. <laughs> he wasn't a vegetarian back then. They used to call you a vegetarian if you didn't eat red meat. Don't you remember? That was there was no vegan. No, I never heard. No one was a vegan back then. <laughs> Andreas Call. Yeah, he was, he was the most famous uh, vegetarian bodybuilder. He wasn't a vegetarian. Yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable. So, yeah, I, so, you know, they even had Arnold in there a little bit, you know, trying to say, you know, oh, uh, I, I might be a vegan. I might switch to veganism. Then Kai Green did a post on his Instagram, you know, biting it. You know, I used to do that in the carnivore ad where you bite the, the you meat. You bite the meat. Well, he's, he's biting a head of broccoli. Oh gosh! Just but, funny. It, it, and everyone's like, people are doing these. All these YouTubers are doing these. Like, is Kai Green gonna switch to veganism now? What no. What will he look like when he does? Will he get in better shape? I'm like, first of all, the fucking be guy small. is. Been, first of all, the guy has already been in the best shape of his life. He doesn't. He doesn't need to switch to veganism to get in shape. He knows how to get in shape. It's not like you, you're not talking about Big Ramy here. Kai has been unbelievable on stage. He's when he won the Arnold. So. That's stupid, number one. Number two, Kai Green loves his protein, okay? He ain't switching to veganism, number one. He's kidding around. 
He's he he's doing it for hype because he knows that everyone's going to go crazy speculating. Okay, he's he's one of the best you know clickbait guys of all time. He knows what, <laughs> right. People think he's dumb. He's the smartest fucking guy on 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 social media. He knows how to get everyone riled up. Yeah. And the truth is that if he did switch to veganism, he'd be like one of those mountain gorillas. He'd have to eat like leaves like fucking all day long to keep up his caloric requirements. But he probably wouldn't look any different. He'd probably look the same. So people are just morons. But but the problem is that's why they make these 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 documentaries because people will believe anything. They'll believe anything. They're so easily swayed. It's unbelievable. Well, that's nothing new. No. That's how people like Donald Trump get uh, get elected. Well, you you might have had a Freudian slip. You he may get arrested. We'll see. <laughs> well, you know, I don't I don't have anything against Donald Trump, but I'm just saying, someone like him can get arrested because people are just they'll believe anything. They don't they don't they just you, don't you know. Elected. You did it twice. You said arrested. <laughs> <laughs> it's possible, right? That's my slip. Yeah. Do you think they'll impeach him? Uh the Demo Oh yeah, they'll he he'll, he'll he may or may not survive. If I. But they'll definitely. They well, he'll get impeached by the House of Representatives, probably, and then the Senate will. He won't get. He won't be impeached by them. I like the whole. I like to sometimes hear about the whole constitutional process. I think these uh, these senators and, and the congressmen and the House of Representative guys. I think they like to use some of the rules in the, the Constitution because you know what you study all this how the Constitution works and yeah, you know, let's put it into action. We but need no one ever does it. You know, no one yeah. does anything. So every once in a while, you got to try to impeach a president just to say, oh, we're going to enact a kind of amendment number, blah 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 blah, and you know, go through the whole process. <laughs> Next week I'm having this coming week I'm having um, Lee Priest's daughter on on Iron Rage. She's competing at a show. What what, what is she bodybuilding or physique or? She's, I think she's figure. I mean, either figure or women's physique. I don't know. So she, genetics, she, right? His mother was a good bodybuilder. He's a good, bo- very yeah, I mean, great bodybuilder. Definitely good genetics in that family, without a doubt. So she's coming on the show. I had asked him about it the week before, and he said. Well, I'll ask her. She must have heard the show, and she's like, "Oh, I, I, she wanted to come on, so she, we're going to get her on to talk about." It. She actually competed this past weekend. I don't know how she did. I got to text Lee, but uh, probably the show was today, and we'll talk about how she did and how she got. Into, it's it's interesting because you know sometimes people reject you know what their parents did. She obviously embraced what Lee did, and she obviously had genetic gifts as well, you know, for for bodybuilding. Whose physical. mother's a better bodybuilder, Lee's or Boston Lloyd's? Good question. I'd love to see a pose down. I mean, they're both, in, both phenomenal, right? Whose father was a better bodybuilder, Zane Watson or or Boston Lloyd's? Um, good question. They're both very good. Yeah, I think I that seeing, John Hanson remember, had John Lloyd on his on his radio show. I used to see them both in magazines when I was a kid. It's so funny. You know, my my kid, my, my son was taking SATs, PSATs the other day, right? I can't believe it already. It's crazy. Yeah, you want you want to laugh? Nineteen eighty five. I took my first. Wait a minute. Eighty. Sorry, eighty. Eighty. Let's see. What year did Lee Haney win the first Olympia? Eighty four. Eighty four. My sister got me tickets to see the eighty four Olympia in New York City. So you skipped your SATs. No, I no, because I was no. I'm are you kidding me? I'm kidding. I gave up the damn Olympia tickets. Oh, you did to take oh the damn as P- uh, PSATs. PSATs. Uh, the pre- uh, how stupid! What a dumb. No, because I was always a very serious person, even to this day. I never understood what the PSATs were for. All I felt like was a dummy after I took them because I didn't prepare. I didn't do anything. People were studying for them. I'm like PSAT. What the fuck is that? Dave, I showed years, up at school and I took a test. Three years, think about that. I, I was driving and talking to my son about the PSATs, and I thought, I skipped the 84 Olympia. I'm sure John Hansen didn't. <laughs> no. And it was in Radio City Music Hall, wow. I think. Yeah. And you had a chance to go. You had tickets. And I had a chance to go. Who was taking it? My sister, oh. who lived in New York City. Oh, right, and three right, years right. later, I was training with Lee Haney beside him at, at Joe Edith's Muscle Camp. Crazy. Is that bizarre? Yeah. Crazy. That's nuts. I mean, I still did shitty on the the PSATs. Yeah, 
I didn't even know you were I, supposed I did to sign on the game yeah. show, the twenty thousand dollar pyramid, than I would on the PSAT. It's the same thing. It's like egg is to chicken, as salt is to pepper, as <laughs> white is to black. And I'm like, what is going on? I'd get like people say, hey Chris, how'd you do on the SATs? I'd say I get a zero. They'd be like, but you got straight A's. I'm yeah. like, well, when that's you teach what I was like. I can learn it. I, yeah, I was terrible at taking tests. Yes, that is because you are really not that smart. If I, when I have taken the SAT, if I would have taken it, if I had not grown up in Egypt, I mean in Yugoslavia, I, I would have gotten a perfect score because I speak nine languages and I, I actually can comprehend what I read. But uh, you know, you Americans, uh, they, they do not. Uh, the schooling here is not as good as where I am from, and. Uh, he always reminded everyone about how many languages he spoke. Well, how smart he was. Well, he didn't say how smart he was. He just told people how many languages. He thinks he's just by saying he's... The reason why he... Let me tell you why Nasser was able to speak whatever it was, six or seven languages. Because he had a photographic memory. If I had a photographic memory, I would have spoken seven languages too. Right? Because no, everything he hears, he remembers. Six. So well, you, it, it helped that he had six or seven girlfriends from different countries. <laughs> no, but but think about it. If you can remember every, you have no memory. You're like me. If you could remember everything that you see and hear, how hard would it be to learn a language? Jay should be able to learn like twenty languages. He should. Then. You're right. He's got a photographic memory. My father had a, somewhat of a photographic memory earlier in life. He said he was read. He would memorize passages from books. So when he would take these English tests and he writing these essays, he would quote paragraphs. And people, they, the teachers thought he, he cheated. He said they used to make him take the test in front of the teachers so because of the, they thought he had like cheat notes he was pulling out. So when he went to, when he went to Spain, and he lived there. He said he was there about a month. He, he felt like he was going to kill himself, he said, because he couldn't communicate with anyone. My father was staying like, like in like in the in the the cheapy places to stay where it was like no one spoke english you know it wasn't like touristy he said one day i'm sitting in a, in a in a coffee shop having a cup of coffee smoking a cigarette he said some woman came up to me asked me something in spanish and i responded in spanish he's like holy shit i can speak spanish <laughs> and, he, and you know what the funny thing is 50 years later whatever it was 60 years later when uh when uh Johnny would uh, talk to my father in Spanish because he didn't believe my father spoke Spanish. My father would, would answer him sometimes. Oh, yeah. and, would, and, and, and Johnny said that my father sounded like he really, like he spoke it authentically. Not not, not like like if you or I try to say uh, something in Spanish. You yeah. Know? Dialect and everything. Yeah, he had like the, the accent and everything like that. So, because, but, my, but that's what happens. I think people that have like photographic memories or better mem very good memories, do very b well with languages. It has, and it has nothing to do with intelligence. It just happens to do with you have good recall. So that's why I can't learn any languages. <laughs> that's that's my, that's my excuse. <laughs> that's my excuse. I will say when I I was in Spain um, for two weeks once um, in 1991 when I went to try to buy steroids there. Oh, I did buy steroids there. Um, I went like a little mini vacation there, from visiting pharmacies. You, By the time had you, I, had you already had you already been did you deducted is the question. Yeah. <laughs> By the time I was ready to leave after the two weeks, I was actually starting to to to, to 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 speak a little bit. I can definitely see if I would have stayed there another like two or three four weeks, I probably would have been communicating in Spanish not well. So I think there's a there's a learning curve with with languages. And it, that's why I think it's a good idea when people, if you want to learn a language, you got to you got to you got to stay in the country. Dennis Wolf was the worst at English, right? And then he he moved to the U.S. I mean, he speaks great now. Oh, that's right. I've, I've been born. That's right. Remember how bad he was? Yeah, yeah, he was terrible. It took him a long time to learn English, but he he actually, I have to give it to him. He learned it without a, without a, an accent. His accent is very very. I mean, he has obviously a little bit of a German accent, but it's almost gone. You know, mm -hmm. and that that's unusual. I mean, look at George Farris still has, you know, speaks, you know, like he just... He still has his Egyptian dialect. Yeah, his, 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 Egyptian, his uh, Lebanese uh, dialect, the uh, accent. So, anyway, that's it. We got the show coming up this weekend in Romania, Wings of Strength. Once again, we all have to take our hat off and thank Jake Wood for making that thing happen. And uh, we'll see who comes out. 
Well, if you had to make it, if you were a betting man, would you, do you Cedric. think Cedric is going to pull this one out? Yeah, yeah. All he has to do is repeat to what he was two weeks ago. What do you, what do you think Reagan Grimes fun, uh, falls uh, in? Probably third. I'd say one, second. Uh, that's, a good, that's a good bet. You know, I mean, one, one's, you know, one just got to look like his bet. One's still chasing... One maybe at this show is probably as good as he was when he won the New York Pro, which was his all-time best. Yeah, and he's chasing that ghost. The bottom line is that's not to say that one hasn't had different shows with different looks and being very impressive at different shows, but his overall best package in terms of fullness and tightness was when he won that New York Pro. He's so smart. I remember, I, thought, I remember seeing him and thinking, wow, what an improvement. He's so smart because you know what? He knows he can stay in shape. He's hitting every show. And you know what? The only one he skipped was I, – I, we had said, why did Juan skip the show? He had to do an appearance someplace else. But he's smart. He's hitting all these shows. These guys can't keep competing like he does. And he's, and he's holding his conditioning. And why not? Collect a paycheck. You know, get points to the Olympia. You know, it's it's brilliant because there's no competition in these. There's no one showing up. In yeah, these I mean, shows. there's a lot of people in the show coming up this weekend, but there's not like there's no names. There's no guys yeah, that, yeah. Are, that are gonna really yeah. challenge him, and you know, in this thing. So is is a is the guy with the magical butt in the show? No, I don't even seek Lucas on this, but you never know. He could show up at the last minute. You know, it's just it's it's amazing when you when you see that Juan keeps coming in and just. Banging out top threes, top three, top three, top three, top three. It, 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 he's doing what the the guys of the 90s used to do on that European tour. Except those guys did it in 10 days. You know, of He's he's doing it over like six weeks. Why they spread these shows out so wide apart, I don't have no idea. Why? You remember when you and, and, and when you went to the European tour, you went to like, what, four shows in, in seven days? Yeah. I like that better. Bang them all out. Send the guys home. Send the guys home. Send the troops home. I kind of liked what they did back in the day with when Wayne was used to bring them around, even though it was kind of like ghetto the way they did it. They would go from city to city. It, it was exciting. Think yeah, about the guys have, they would have. That. They would have eight shows in like twelve days. But it was you yeah, know they would have a week. They would have weekday shows, right? But now with got with with video and stuff like that, and iPhones, you can video, you can chronicle the whole thing. It would be super exciting to watch, you know, from your house vicariously. Who knows? They have a two twelve in, in in Romania, you know, too. Yeah, so it's pretty deep. Yeah, there's no one really. I see Samuel Haddad. He's really the only big name in that lineup. Yeah, but some of those guys have, have big physiques in that lineup. Yeah, I think we might get some people that we we're not expecting to to to, to kick some butt over there. Well, you know, you you know, you know. I mean that that topic should have came up on the iron debate. Is you know, there's this discussion that were the guys in better condition? The two twelve guys are always in phenomenal condition. Yeah, those guys are. I mean, so in other words, this this Romania two twelve will be stacked. The top nine guys will be appealed. All right, we'll see if you're right. We'll see if you're right, and that's going to bring us to the end of another episode. And uh, remember, Chris, with Heavy Muscle Radio, the truth hurts. Good night, everyone. We'll see you next week.